All right, my name is Paul Colton. I'm the uh, founder CEO of Pix8. Um, I just wanted to touch briefly, I wasn't here yesterday, that uh, I'm actually not a Ruby guy, shocker, but you'll see why that's not as relevant for my talk. Um, but I know a good thing when I see it. So that's why, it's, in terms of sponsorship, it was important to me, and also um, just supporting the product as early on as we could. And again, you, you'll see more specifically why if you don't already know what we do. But I just wanted to point that out, you know, as a developer, you know, we kind of know good tools when we see them. So Ruby Motion was, uh, I mean, pretty awesome since the moment I saw it. All right, so quick agenda, what I want to cover. Um, I have a video at the end because we have no connectivity. And, um, but I want to make sure to show it because it's a kind of a sneak peek of what we're doing. And we have not shown it publicly at all to anyone yet. So I thought, why not? Let's do this group. Um, so that's a five minute video, so I'm gonna make sure to save my last five minutes for this, for, for that video. So real quick, I wanna just give you a super brief agenda, uh, history. I wanna talk mainly about our core product called Freestyle, um, and then demo that product, both in Xcode and not in Xcode, and then that video I talked about. All right, hi quick history of the company. Uh, we were uh, Found in 2012, a Y Combinator company. If you guys know, it's a local, now more than local, uh, kind of incubator thing. Uh, really did that for fun to see what it was all about. And it was, it was pretty cool. It was OK. Um, and we got venture funded a year after that, um, which is almost a year ago. So to spend as much money as we can and, and survive in the, in the, you know, during that spending. Um, all right, so I want to jump right in. So. The product used to just be called Pixate Framework, and we gave it a better name since we want to reuse our, the Pixate name for the new thing. Freestyle is just a neat name because we made it not only free, we've also open sourced it. Um, but most importantly, it's about styling in a very general sense of the word. And before everyone gets too scared, I, wanna, I have to reiterate so many times, and I probably will a few times with you guys, there are no web views in this demo. Um, the thing that's really, really important is we use CSS as our, you know, DSL as our declarative markup for doing what we do. Uh, yes, it's the same CSS as the web. That's what makes it cool. What it's not is the web. And that's the thing that's just, again, really important. You wouldn't know how many demos we've given. And at the end, like, that's great. So where are the web views? It's like, no, there's no web views. It's all 100% native. Um, but what is freestyle, basically? Um, it's it's kind of two core pieces. We've written an entire W3C compliant CSS parsing engine. Um, and all of that, selectors, all those get really nasty if you've done any CSS, but uh, I'll show you that. And we support all of that on iOS and Android, which is really cool to see the, uh, the Ruby Motion announcement about Android. So we have to get busy on that. Um, the other thing is a, a graphics engine. So we implemented our own kind of, let's call it a lightweight SVG vector graphics engine um, for doing rendering of vector-based assets instead of bitmaps. Um, live, in, live interfaces, so the ability to change the UI while, after the program has been compiled. And then, of course, as I mentioned, uh, it's open source. So real quick, because I just want to show you more than show you slides, but to quickly kind of touch on the three main parts. So again, I mentioned W3C compliant. That just means we have run all the tests we could, the W3C tests of CSS, the, the, the spec, and we pass all of them that are relevant to us, that's the other thing. We're not web, so not all things are 100% relevant to what we do, but everything that is relevant, we support. Um, it's all native APIs, so in a sense, think of it as it's CSS that maps essentially directly to the native APIs underneath uh, for doing all the things we do, styling views, buttons, labels, all that stuff. Uh, we leverage core graphics and core animation on iOS and the equivalent on Android. You can tell more on the iOS side. Um, and that just means that everything you're doing in the markup gets translated directly to how you would do it natively. So in a way, we are really are saving you that step. And real quick, I didn't mention, this all started from, as I deep dove into trying to build mobile apps, what I found is I was spending 80% of my time in the design and the UI of the app. I'm not a designer, and, uh, and that's a lot of time spent in iterating on the UI when I realized at the end, I was like, I'm not spending the time where I wanted to spend it. It was what my app did, not necessarily what it looked like. We all know what it looked like. What it looks like is very important. Um, that was how the whole product got started. How can we kind of abstract that out a bit, make it faster, iterate, way easier to use, script against it. We can use SAS, for example, because we're CSS. You cannot build, use CSS tooling in front of it, all of that good stuff. The graphics engine. It was very important, if you look at most apps, probably all, most of the apps you guys are doing, building, and using, 
it's predominantly bitmap based, you know, PNGs and all that, and that's really wasteful. If you, if you really scrutinize most of those, they're generally gradients and borders and this and this and that. Almost everything could be programmatically defined except for a photograph, uh, which obviously needs to be a bitmap. So we wanted to make sure that was built in, and I'll show you how that comes into play. I mentioned SVG support, and we do do some compositing built in. We didn't do everything yet. Our goal is to like mirror most of what Photoshop can do. But for now, the idea is more of if you have a, a gradient and a border and they're rounded, all those things get composited in real time and then cached. So it's only rendered once and then used throughout the life cycle of your app. And then I mentioned vector drawing. There's a whole API there besides the ability to load and render SVGs at any resolution. By the way, that also is cool because you can have one asset for retina, non-retina, iPad, iPhone, you know, all that. Frankly, you can have the same resource for your website for Android and iOS. Uh, that's very interesting. I'll even show you our, one of the, our apps. We're literally using the same assets on Android, iOS, and our website, the same SVG files. And finally, live interfaces. I'm going fast, so I cover it all. Uh, and live interfaces, I kind of mentioned that, but the idea is, and I'll show you, there, there's a way, generally your CSS would be bundled in with your project, deployed and done, but there is a way to say, hey, I want to turn on live mode, and then let me edit that CSS, and basically the app is just watching that file. And uh, as you change the CSS, we, the, the UI updates dynamically. Uh, what's nice is you could do that over the network. The, 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 the product, if you will, built in doesn't do that because it's so easy for you to do that. We provide the mechanism and doing it over the network is, is easy. Um, that, this whole live thing, of course, opens up some obvious things with personalization, A-B testing, all really neat stuff. The ability to, to change what your app looks like. You could hide views. We do basic positioning and layout, but not a whole layout engine. I know there's actual other interesting products. We've looked at it. Auto layout, as you know, is a real pain. So we just stayed away from it because we were focused on styling. Layout is next. Um, but before that is the new thing we're working on. So for us, layout is third, but other people are working on it already. All right, so for you guys, if you will, getting started is really easy. Um, I had help um, uh, in building the... Um, basically the, the gem for, for integrating, which is very easy. I mean, it's very small, which is nice because native code can integrate so seamlessly to Ruby Motion. There's very little effort. Um, but there's a Motion Pix8 freestyle gem. Um, you just put in your rake file, and I'll show you an actual file, but put it like that. And basically, we're down to one line for telling, telling the gem where is the framework. And the framework, you literally just, you just download the native one, and then you just uh, do a symbolic link or copy it to your vendor directory. Again. I'm saying it's easy because I've also done it for other products like Xamarin and stuff, and that's a lot more work. You have to provide all these bindings. Uh, this is so straightforward in that you, there's no specific build required. You can literally download our latest version of Freestyle, drop it in, and use it immediately in Ruby Motion, and that's like super, super awesome. All right, so let me just jump straight into just showing you guys um, you know what some of this stuff looks like. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you can see here's uh, just a very, very simple, again, I'm not a Ruby guy, so uh, you will not be seeing me type a lot of this stuff, um, but more importantly, you can see, obviously, I just required the, uh, the gem right there. It, this is also on GitHub in terms of the gem is, the samples are, freestyle is, the Android version, iOS version, it's all up there. Um, and then down here, just, just um, do, do the framework and that's it. So I want to show you is a very simple app that starts by not doing much at all. Let me do it here. Okay. Okay, and that's blank for some reason. Let's try one more time. Oh, error connecting to server. Is that required for me to run this? Restarting? Yeah, I just ran it before I gave the talk. Yeah, I did. I quit, I quit the simulator. And then restarting? Sorry, guys. Um, And then run it again. Oh, it 
you've got small. My bad. Yeah, I got it. Sorry about that. Small screen. All right. I told you it was a very simple app. Okay, so I'll go. So I have some hidden code down here, basically, just to show you guys. So very simple. The idea is you you initialize Pix8, and what that does is kind of bootstrap the system. We hook into all the views. So that's one thing, by the way. We cover. I don't know what the percent is. It's high 90s. We pretty much cover all the iOS uh, views, um, nearly all of them. A and we expose pretty much, you can access nearly every aspect of every view. So it's you know, two years of work, many tens of thousands of lines of code that, that we've opened. So it, it's been a tremendous effort uh, getting this product uh, to, to, to the stage it's at. So how it works is basically well, super quick. Uh, for, for anyone that doesn't know about CSS and maybe some, some quick background, if you will, um, or concepts, the, the simplest way in the way we'll treat it today is think about this, is in CSS, like on the web, you can give something, you can access something by its element name. An easy way to think about that is like a div, or in this world, maybe a button. So you say, I want to style button. That means any button, anywhere I ever see, I'll style it. Note, I recommend you do not style view because everything is a view. So people get themselves in trouble. View, background color blue, everything turns blue. Well, because everything's a view. Anyway, so you can style by element. The other way you can do is you can style by class. Think of classes like a grouping of things. So you can say, I want to call all my, I want to give all my buttons a class of my buttons. Now you can style all of those buttons via a single block of CSS. And then finally, there's IDs. Think of, think of IDs as a single instance of a thing. So you could have my button one, my button two, my button three. You would have all buttons are a class, and then button represents any button anywhere. So that, that's the idea. So how freestyle works fundamentally is you literally assign IDs and classes directly to your views. And you don't have to. You can go by element name. I always recommend, though, ID and class. You just have a lot more control over what's being styled and what isn't. So many of our bugs are people style things like text label or label and then say, hey, my button breaks and this breaks. Because they don't realize that a lot of these more complex controls are built, of course, with these other controls. So when you're going under there, because we inject ourselves really deep in, in how AS works um, and Android. And so you're better off styling what you know you're looking at, not telling the system anything of this type. So with that said, what I'll do here is I will, um, Actually, I'll start with the button. So what, notice what I'll do is I'll put, so we created a button here, just like you guys normally would. And then I'm going to give that button a style ID, and simply with dot style ID. Instead of, uh, why didn't we use ID in class? Kind of obvious, those are overloaded already. So we stuck the word style in front. Um, so that's it. So now, oops, sorry. If you guys know shortcuts, you can let me know. All right. So now notice the font's bigger. Well, why is that? Is because if you look at our CSS, I left right here my button. Notice I'm accessing the by ID. Um, I said size 40, so I'll just go a little quicker here now. So for example, I could say, you know, background color red, right? So now I'll just run again. So there it is there. Now, in a second, I'll switch to how we do this live. You can see why going back and forth, you know. but. The idea is say like, um, uh, actually it's, uh, is it border radius? I'm forgetting that in CSS. Yeah, so now you see, now you can see I'm not the designer, but you get the idea. So now the idea is, so what's interesting is, by the way, when you specify color, for example, we just set the color. When you specify rounded corners, well, obviously color alone can address that. So what happens automatically is it's now no longer using color, it's now generating a bitmap on the fly rounding those corners, doing that compositing, and now setting that as the button's background. But all of that is, again, transparent to you, and it's only done once. The other thing you can do is stuff like background image. Let's say we can do sorry, linear gradient. And what all things you can do, well, primarily it's all in the CSS spec, but this gives you a quick idea. So now we have, well, not pretty, but, uh, but you know, we've got linear gradient. Eh. Okay, and I'll do one more. Um, so now let's make it a little bit prettier. How about we go from well, gray? Say we want the text to be. We want the text to be white. Um, geez. Say we want the border color to be yellow. We have a designer. He would literally kill me. Uh, yeah, uh, and border style. 
and that there's shortcuts for these. I just I like to be explicit, right? All right, so there you go. You get the gist, but what's really neat is, again, is you've got a, a, a resolution independent graphic being rendered. The only amount of bytes you know, required in your app is this text. This text can be dynamic. You can, you can actually specify the CSS in code. Um, you can actually, there's a style CSS property that you can hand inline code. Some people actually generate that on the fly and pass it through and that sort of stuff. And then just to finish this app out, you can see I did here, you can put an ID on the background itself, for example. Um, and then I've got a little bit of markup for that. Same, same idea. I think I covered everything here. Oops. All right, so now the background's got that, the button, all that good stuff. And then the final thing I'll just show you is, is the, the live stuff. So there's just um, this little mode here. So that there's a convenience function we, we put, not function, but just uh, if you want to see, so it automatically loads. What I didn't mention is you, you set your rake file, you, you do the stuff in your app delegate, and then you add just a default.css file in your resources folder. You can have any file name you want, as many of you want. You can import each other. But if there's one called default, it loads that by default. You don't have to do anything. But if you want to see where is that file located, obviously in the simulator it's some crazy place, right? So you can do this basically. You can just say, I'm just going to print out the path of that CSS file. And then I'm going to tell Pix8 Freestyle to please monitor changes in that file, right? So now when I run, okay, so now it's running. So hopefully, so here now you see it printed that out. So um, I just started using BB Edit. Uh, um, we'll see how it is. Okay, so there's. Not a lot of screen real estate, but you get the gist. So there's that, and hopefully if all this works, we'll just do. Of course, that didn't work. Okay, let me, let me do this. Keep it old school. All right. All right, well, for some reason, I must have missed something. Let me try that. I'm not sure why that's not doing it. Oops. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, I, I must have forgot something. But the idea is you can, you can turn that on, and actually the app will, will update uh, dynamically as you... Um, yeah, I might not have. I, you know, I'm going to move on. I think you get the idea. What I want to show you, I'm in Xcode, but I'm not going to write any Objective-C. What I'm going to show you is that how interesting it is in terms of a lot of the demos that I've done here just in for showing off the product is all I did use uh, um, Xcode for is the UI. Just dragged all these things out here, for example, built a calculator. I didn't even implement the logic. That wasn't the point. So I dragged all these guys out. And then, of course, just some CSS, right? So if I were to run this app as is, you get what you'd expect, right? A kind of ugly calculator. But what's really neat is now I, you can see I've set IDs on the app itself. I send a font family. Screen is the background. Here you can see the element thing where I'm saying all buttons, I want to be this way. And then I added some classes to some buttons. So I said, if it's a button but has the class of orange on it, do this. If it has dark gray, you know, so on and so forth. So now I'll just, just by uncommenting that, so now you see it looks like the iOS calculator. And what's really cool is iOS 7's now been out for a year, but what was neat is when you didn't have the CSS, it looked like an iOS 6 old school calculator with the old ugly buttons. You applied the CSS on iOS 6, and it looked like an iOS 7 app. And that's the other thing is it's also a way to kind of normalize your app across OS versions and that kind of thing. But obviously, if you wanted to change the look of these buttons, any of that, you know, it's clear now how straightforward that might be. The other thing... Um, Here's another cool one. Let me show you this one. I'm sorry, I'm not used to the small real estate here. So here's an example of, I'll just run it. So what this is, is basically doing a few cool things. Number one, it's loading an SVG file as, as the image in the background. The other thing we've added is 
let's call it basic support for keyframes. So CSS3 has a concept of keyframe animation. So we're really what we're doing is we're exposing core animation to you completely declaratively here through using standard CSS3 keyframe tag. So you can see what, what you do is you just name, name, you say on the vector view, which is just the view that holds that thing, I want to use an animation called rotate, which I've defined down here for two seconds. Fill mode and timing is the, how, it, how it eases and, and do, does the things it does. And you can see I said I want to go from 0, 0, 2, 1, scale, and a 6.2 time rotation. And then I also stuck one in the middle. And what's neat is I can increase that rotation, for example. Let's make it bigger. And then you should, should spin a lot faster. You know, and I go and you got, again, very little effort, obviously. And then the other thing, I've got a nicer, uh, another... You know, I'm just going to swap SVGs, put a little toucan in there, and there you go. But again, what's really cool is this, again, if this were on an iPad or, or any whatever non-retina devices, that vector renders to the absolute best resolution of the device it's running on, and, uh, and you don't have to make that determination ahead of time. The other demo I would like to show is this one. Um, always, uh, you can see, I'd like, to, I'd like to comment out the styling. So the spoilers, we've got some animation and all kind of cool stuff in here. But if you look at this, uh, let's get the same idea is I literally just drag out a table view and I'm done. Like, I always think, of like, I'm the developer. This is the best I, I can do. I'll go write the code to fill that with data, but I'm done. Hey, designer. And by the way, this is exactly how I went down for me. I started designer Justin. I said, um, please just design me something real quick so I can demo it. So then he gave me the CSS. So if I run this table view, I said, oh, no. So I gotta use Ruby Motion, not Xcode. All right, so that's what it looks like when I'm done with it, right? Um, but now this is what can happen when he's done with it. You can see what's really cool is, and this is an extreme example of zero, there's zero design effort put in at the coding level. The designer, which could be you, comes in and now says, okay, table view, I'm going to quickly build it up. So table view and the header footer view, let me do that. So now you can see I've got a section, there it is, I think it's just scrolling, and now the, the things are bigger, blah, blah, blah. Now I say, okay, for, for the header footer view, the text labels in there and the cells themselves, I'd like to put a font. I see I put, you can actually specify text, notice it says people to follow and all of that kind of stuff. Here's some of the more fancy selector stuff I mentioned. Check it out, you can say selected state. That's in there. Here's, these are really cool, nth child. So you can do things like odd and even, every third, all that stuff's built in. So that was not fun to, to do. But um, so, so now notice, now you've got this kind of alternating row stuff, you know, all that. And then I've put class names of, uh, on some of this info, on those cells, the cell button, all that stuff. So now when I run it, so now I've got my head all over the place, but you, you get, and by the way, that little button here is a vector button, but again, you notice I'm not, obviously I'm not writing any code, I'm not changing any code, I'm just building up the CSS for you guys, and then you're seeing, you know, you're seeing this stuff change, and I think that's probably the, the most compelling aspect of this, and then to finalize here, I just put a completely rational little kind of bobblehead thing, you know, but again, I didn't have to even know how that's done, you know, like how, how would you do that in code, like who cares, you know, I know how to do it in CSS now. And then finally, the, the close this demo is, I always like to show, that's why I say try the second. So I completely change the look of this table just by changing the CSS. This one uses actually some images here and there. I think it still does the bobblehead though. So there you go. So I'll zoom in. Does that show? You can see, you see like the frayed paper and the little line. Uh, or in the, the textured thing, those, those are images. And the point is, right, we're not saying only vector, that is, it's completely up to you, but all definable uh, in markup. All right, um, let me see if there's any must have. Um, the last one I'll do real quick, is I wanna show you this, this uh, super slick video of ours. Is there's an app, which is all, I mean, everything's open, I keep saying that, but this app we built originally for our testing uh, testing of the system. It's called Playground. It's actually on the App Store as well. But what's really neat about it is everything in this app, including the app itself, is 100% styled with freestyle. And what this is, it's a showcase of nearly all controls. 
and how you can style them and how you can rotate them and you can change this text dynamically um, and like I said, make that 45 and see when you stop typing, it, it changes the thing there, right? Um, and that's the idea is it just lets you experiment and play and you can see with the, the scope in which we like even the, the marker and then you can switch the entire apps um, look, look and feel now. So like, like even that has changed and, and all that good stuff. So again, all this is open and available. All right, so where, let me just continue here. All right, so our one more thing is our next step was where do we go from here? We really thought it was um, layout and it still is layout. But what we found, everyone we talked to, and this is from big companies like Twitter all the way on down, is uh, mobile interaction or interaction prototyping and all that stuff is really hard, right? As you guys know, first of all, implementing it is hard. But how, you, know, you want to get a sense of what it is before you spend two weeks implementing a very complex interaction. So that's what we focused on next. So we actually have, I don't have time to explain it all. I can explain some later. But it's basically declarative also underneath the guts. It's a whole XML markup. We've written our own scripting language. It's like JavaScript, but, sm but smaller. And it drives this, pro this, this kind of dynamics, um, you'll see real-time kind of interaction engine. What's neat is that's driven by XML underneath. But then we have all of that's going to be driven through APIs and a web UI that we've built or building. So without you know, going further, what I want to do is show you this video. Um, it's not me talking. It's my product guy. I'm, I'm doing some of the work, you'll see. But um, what's cool is, so we haven't shown this to anybody yet, but I'll just start by saying it's a web UI that talks to our back end, which essentially generates the XML required by the, the native app, which you'll see in a minute. I'm excited for what does that mean for code gen? How do we embed this stuff in applications? You can see now with styling, layout, and user interaction, there's not much left to code other than the pure logic of your app, and that's really our goal. So let me start this video. Hey, this is Andrew with Pix8, and I'm here with our CEO, Paul, and we're going to show you a quick tour of Pix8, which is an interaction design tool for prototyping complex mobile interactions and animations. What makes Pix8 unique is that it lets you create 100% native prototypes that run on device without any code or extra effort. So today we're going to recreate an interactive animation using our web-based editor, and Paul's going to be using our app, which is running on his phone. So we want to reiterate that that's a native app, there's no web views at all. I'm going to recreate a cool interaction from an app called Jelly. So if you're not familiar with Jelly, this is what it actually looks like. And there's a sort of a card dragging interaction where you drag questions that you don't want to answer down, um, and that's what we're going to recreate. So to get started, I'm first going to create a screen in our web-based editor while Paul plays with our, our player app. So let's just call this Jelly. And I'll jump in. And the first thing I'm going to do is just create a background layer. I've already chopped out some assets from screenshots I took of Jelly, so we'll be using those. So let me jump over to the Assets tab, and I'll just drag over this background PNG. And I'll publish that just so you can see that that will update on the phone. So there we go. So the first thing we'll want to do is create the actual question layer that will sit on top. And I don't remember how big that is, so let me check the asset. So it's 304 by 357. So I'm just going to resize that layer quickly and then center it up. And then we'll grab this asset I've taken of just one of the questions I had. And we'll want to make this layer, uh, we want to take the fill out of this layer so the rounded corners actually work. And I'll publish that. And you'll see the player updates. So now the whole point is to prototype an interaction. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an interaction and a gesture to this layer. So we support drag and tap right now. So I'm going to just drag the drag interaction over to this layer. And you'll see we created an animation to move the layer. Now there's two types of animations in Pix8. There's interactive animations, which continuously animate as you uh, use an interactive gesture. And there's timed animations, which are timed and, and fire with a duration. So we've automatically created a free drag animation here, which I'm going to publish. And now we'll see in the player app, Paul's going to be able to drag this layer all over the screen. Now that's not quite what we want. This uh, in Jelly only moves vertically, so I'm going to switch this to a vertical drag and publish again. And now as Paul drags his finger all over the place, the layer is constrained to a vertical axis. Now the Jelly app has the, the question card rotate downwards as you drag it, so I'm going to add an animation for that. So I'll add the rotate animation. And again, we want this to be interactive because it's happening as we drag. So I will base this off of the Y position of the layer as it moves. 
And we want it to rotate between its starting position, which is 89, and somewhere off screen, which is, let's just say 800. And let's have it rotate to 30 degrees. So we'll publish that. So now as Paul moves the layer downward, you'll see it rotate downward. Now if he lets go, it's not going to snap back to its starting position, which we want. So let's first do that with move. So I will add another move animation to this layer, but this time I want it to be timed. And I want it to be based on a discrete event like drag end. So when Paul lets go, it should move back to where it started. So let's do that first. So I want it to move back to a Y value of 89, and let's just give it a, a fairly short duration and publish that. And so now, regardless of where the layer is when he lets go, it will jump back to its starting position. Now it's not rotating back, we'll have to do that. But before we do, let's add a condition to this move animation so it only moves back to start if it's near the top. So we'll reference this layer, we'll say question.y if, if that position is less than say 300, let's move back to start. Otherwise, let's have it move off screen. So we'll have it move again to that sort of 800 pixel mark. And I'll publish that. So now if Paul lets go sort of near the top, it's gonna snap back to its starting position. And if he drags downward quite far, it'll jump off the screen. So we want to do something very similar with rotate. So it continues to rotate if we move off screen and rotates back to the starting position uh, if it's close to the top. So again, we'll, we'll base this off drag end and we'll use the same condition we just used. So if question.y is less than 300, we want it to rotate back to zero degrees, which is where it started. Otherwise, let's have it rotate to that 30 degree final rotation angle. And I will publish that. And so now, now you'll see sort of a natural behavior as the layer is let go near the top, it rotates back. If it's let, you know, drag it far down, it rotates off it. So that's a pretty simple peek. All right, so I'll stop there. That's the, the, the quick preview. But um, what's cool is, again, that's all native on the right. Again, you know, no, I mean, that's all UI views. And this works 100% now on both Android and iOS. Again, all driven declaratively. Um, through this web interface, and like I said, all it's doing is, is it's a front end to that. But again, you can see, and by the way, that entire app I'd mentioned, all the icons you saw, everything is all being style by freestyle. Those are all vector. You saw the little phones at the beginning of, of the, in the web UI, these, these guys, and then what you see right there, those are literally the same assets as I mentioned in the beginning. And um, anyway, so that's, that's the video. And then um, and just to end, basically, we're um, on our homepage right now. You can sign up um, to get on that beta. Um, and if you guys really want on it, don't, don't kill my email, but feel free to email me directly. It's a queue, but I'd be happy to get you guys on it first um, since you saw it first. Um, but in terms of getting freestyle, I mentioned it's on GitHub. We do have packaged installers that just make it easy to in one click install and put it on your system without having to, to clone the repo. Um, that's for freestyle, freestyle.org. To get to the beta of this new stuff we're doing, just go to pixate.com. And if you have any other questions or anything, uh, just email me directly. All right, thank you.